Hello there, I'm Chef Johnny. This is Texas Style Barbecue and Cuisine. Today we're working on barbecue equipment. We haven't cooked on our UDS. If you see, there's no videos on our UDS and this is the reason why. Let's pan down and uh, look at this. My UDS has given up the ghost between the heat and the rust and time, it's dilapidated. So what we're gonna do today is, is we're gonna show you how to rebuild a UDS. You could do this not even as a rebuild, but as a new one. You can take these instructions and build you a new one. Or you can look and say, what's salvageable off of our old UDS? And things like uh, the grate, we can probably reuse the grate. Our pipes, our gate valves, uh, our basket is still good uh, for, our, for our fire basket. So there's a lot on here we can use. We're gonna take the parts off we can use to save a little bit of money. And we're gonna build a new UDS using parts from our old one. So stick around. Let me show you how we do this. You can see what we're working with. We've uh, have the old one, and mainly what I want to salvage is my pipes, my gate valves, uh, of course the, uh, the the grate that's going across the top, and the uh, fire basket. If we say the fire basket, so we're going to try to do that. Here on the top, um, I'll, I'm going to save my smokestack, and you'll see why I have a stack. I know some people just put holes on these. I'll show you why I have a stack on this one in a minute. But we'll save the smokestack and uh, maybe the, the hook. I didn't buy a new hook. So we may do the hook where I can hang the lid on the side. That's there. Uh, 5 16 hardware, just uh, 5 16 bolts, so it's a half-inch head is what they are. So i got a half-inch ratchet. You're not going to need a lot of tools. Uh, you can use just bolts or a half inch ratchet, half inch uh, uh, open end box end wrench. And uh, you're going to need uh, some screwdrivers, just regular common screwdrivers. Um, I'm going to need a pipe wrench for taking my, I'm sure that those are rusted pretty good to get my elbows off of my uprights. So we'll take pipe wrenches, pull those apart, get that apart as you can. You're going to need a drill and some drill bits, a 5 16 drill bit and four. Uh, three quarter inch pipe, you're gonna get an inch and an eighth um, hole saw. And so when you get that, that'll probably, if you don't have one, that's gonna be one of your bigger expenses, probably 16, 17, 18 dollars to get that. But that will allow you to, uh, to drill holes for your air intakes at the bottom. Uh, so you'll need that inch and an eighth hole saw. So not a lot of tools, not a lot of work. You don't have to be real handy. Um, if you've got some basic skills of building, you can build this and you can take apart an old one and rebuild it. This is one of the first ones I ever built, probably the first one. Uh, I've built quite a few since then, given them to friends and family. And uh, so, and they've always, everybody's always enjoyed them that I've given them to. I'm going to put a different handle on this one. This handle was too low. So when you grabbed it, the top of your hand was against the lid. So I've got a bigger handle for this one. And man, I spent, I'll, I'll check it all in a minute, but maybe $20. And, and stuff to, to fix this with. Uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna take off this and we're gonna take off the uh, hook if it'll come off. If not, if I can't get these bolts off, then we'll just buy a new hook. Just won't do that right now. Now, this isn't, this isn't real tough to get off. I'm gonna try to give you all some camera angles, do some close-ups where you can see what I do. But these, lo these are lock nuts that are just used for conduit. That's what we're gonna use to hook our, our pipes in at the bottom for our air intakes but also for this. So you just take, uh, these are just, uh, they kind of got ridges on them and they, and they tighten up. They don't, there's not a wrench or anything. You just take a hammer and to tighten them and loosen them. So I'm gonna loosen this one. And it's loosening pretty good. Just wanna make sure the whole pipe's not spinning. And it's not, so we're gonna keep tapping it. And I mean, this drum smoke, this is, it's old. I couldn't tell you how old, but it's years and years old. We've done a lot of cooks. Uh, we use it in our competition cooking uh, regularly with those guys. And I haven't done that in probably four or five years. So I mean, this one's probably 10 years old. So I had a $120 investment in this. So that's not bad for, something that cooks as good as a UDS. 
Let me finish getting this off, then we'll get back with you and show what we're going to do next. This came loose enough that we can do it by hand now. So I'm just going to grab this and come in the back and grab my pipe, unscrew it here. And there you have it. And uh, what I did was, was I had just taken a hole saw, drilled that. So if you have a drum, look for one that has the bung holes, the big and little in it. If not, then uh, just use your hole saw, drill it. And I've got a lock nut on top and bottom, so they pressure against each other. And that's the way that those worked. But this new one has a bung hole in it, and I'm gonna just going to screw this right into the, the threads of the bung hole. So there we go. That's off. Let's see if we can get the hook off. Take my half inch wrench and I've got it on there. Well, it came loose real easy, so that's good. Let's see if this front one will break loose. Well, they both broke loose. Let's see if they'll unscrew all the way. These are the only bolts I forgot. I forgot to buy bolts for this. So, I'm going to try to salvage these. If not, then I'll go buy some new ones. But I forgot to buy these. Let's see if we can undo these bolts here. Well, let's see. Those are all the way out. Can't loosen those up. So we're going to have to work from the inside. Let's turn this around. We're going to see if we can get these off. I'm going to take a, uh, a wrench here. And we're going to see if they'll unscrew. Well, it's like it is. We shut the cameras off for a while. I'm going to show you these eye bolts. What I did, the reason I put eye bolts on, the inside of the eye bolt holds my grate in place. It's got, I've got four, two eye bolts and just two regular bolts that hold my grate. What this does is by having the eye bolt, it steadies my upright pipe so they don't want to swing one way or the other because I ran them through my eye bolt. The eye bolt wasn't quite big enough to take care of a three quarter inch pipe, so I just stretched it a little bit so that it would fit. But let me get these off, we'll get right back with you. Last thing I'm gonna get off is my thermometer. Last time I checked when I was using it, it did work. So we'll just take it, clean it up, uh, put it in some uh, boiling water, see if it marks 212. Uh, I don't know if it goes down to 32, but if it does, we can put it in some, an ice slurry, see if it's measuring right, and if it is, we'll use this same thermometer. If not, I'll pick up another one. Now, we're going to measure around our barrel to put our holes in it, and a barrel is a, about six foot around, 71 and a half inches, and I don't, if you had a, you know, one of those tape measures, those cloth ones that'll fold around it, that would be great. I don't have one. So what I've done is, is I've just taken some uh, twine off of my, uh, like my weed eater twine it's not going to stretch it's fairly stiff and i've marked it at intervals so that my holes are all in the same place so i'm going to start at the seam on the barrel i'm going to put this about two and a half inches down get my marks all the way around then i'll get my two and a half inch marks and that's going to be where the air holes will go so from my seam i'm going nine inches because i don't want to put a hole right where the seam is so i'm going to go nine inches and then 18 18 and 18 away from there and that's going to put us pretty close won't be exact but close enough for the people we're working for. So if we'll look at this right here, I've marked right there. So we know that's where one of our holes is gonna go. And I'll spin it around, just spin my barrel. Just, you need somebody to help you do this so it stays steady. You got the, on the seam, John? Huh? Got it? All right, so we're still on our seam. There's my mark at my 18 inch interval. And we'll spin it one more time. And there's a mark I'd already put on earlier. So we've spun it, you got me on the, 
You know, and this can show you using a tape, a metal tape measure. It was just a fuzz off, not very much though. We had it pretty close. Now I'm going to go back. I'm going to put my two and a half inch marks on the barrel. Got my mark. I'm going down two and one half inches to here. That's right where it goes. So two and a half inches down from the bottom, going upwards. I'm going to flip it over. And then we'll get the measurements from the top down. They're going to be seven inches down, but we'll use our string again to pull everything around to make sure they're just in the right place. Those will be our five 16 inch holes. These are going to be our air intake. So we're going to use our one and eighth inch hole saw for our three quarter inch pipes. This is why you always measure twice, cut once. My holes were about two inches off on my last two holes up here. So uh, I got off of my measurements some kind. As y'all know, it's hard to hold a metal tape measure and go around it. So I'm going to show you how I did that now. So what I did was, was just took a piece of uh, trimmer cord and I marked my nine inches and then I marked 18, 18, 18, all the way around it. Went all the way around the drum, got my marks on the bottom. And then when I came back to the top is when I realized the two top ones, two of the measurements were off by about two inches. So. Had somebody hold this for me, pulled it around. It doesn't stretch, so you could pull it nice and tight. Went around. Now I know all of my measurements are even with the seam. They're at nine, then they're at uh, 18 inches away, 18 inches away, 18 inches away. So that's where we have, and it's like 71 and a half inches all the way around the barrel. So we got that in there. Everything's uniform. It's going to work out just fine. So I'm going to show you how we're going to uh, drill the holes now. Now, we're going to get started here. I'm going to show you a close-up where you can see where my mark was off. I remeasured always. Measure twice, cut once, drill once. I'd have been off by two inches on two of these marks. So always measure twice. So I'm going to come in here, and I need to be at my seven-inch hole. I'm going to come down from my uh, on the bottom of the lip, seven inches, and I'm on my 18-inch mark. So that'll be right where my hole is for my uh, grill grate. There we go. First bolt hole. Now on the other end, that's where my uh, air intake is. So I'm going to get the other drill where I got my hole saw on it. Take my hole saw. And if you've never seen a hole saw before, there's a pilot uh, drill in there first and then the bigger one. So. We're going to put the pilot right on our cross at two and a half inches off the bottom. That's all the way through. Here we go, next hole. And so it didn't wobble around a lot, I just took a punch and just hit me a little hole there so I know where it's center. Stay a little better. Gonna drill this hole. But we're still wanting to walk some. now y'all can see where I told you that first hole was off at two inch mark. We've got it. This flip ends with the barrel. Comes our hole saw. Center drill. Now be careful when you use a hole saw. It will jerk that drill around. If you're not careful. And there's that hole, so I'm going to drill the other two holes, then I'll get right back with you. Now, we have some sharp edges on the inside of our barrel where our drill came through. And I'm just taking a screwdriver, and I'm kind of at an angle, going to run it around that to knock those sharp edges off. Kind of hard to get in here close. It's just me out here, so. Just want to knock the, the burrs off that might be on there. Get rid of those. You had a little file or something. You could take them off with that. Now, pretty simple process. Going to take one of our 5 16 inch, 2 inch long bolts. Put it into our hole. Inch and a half would probably work. I just grabbed some 2 inch. It's there. Washer on the inside. Nut on the outside. Half inch wrench on the inside. It's got my socket on the outside. And we're just going to snug this up. 
and there you go. Put one of those on each side, and I'm going to show you how we do our uh, eye bolts to hold up our pipes on the outside. So I've got my pipe wrench on my pipe, got my other wrench on my gate valve, and we're just going to see if we can unscrew this now. There we go, gate valves off, or coming off, that was loud, so I can take my eye bolt off, and you can tell, this actually last time was a 3 8 inch, is what I used instead of 5 16 didn't measure those before I went and got parts, so what you can see what this does is, when it slides on here, it holds our pipe in place, so we can't swing side to side, and then the inside of the eye bolt goes inside as part of our uh, holders for our grate. So it serves kind of two, two purposes. <clears throat> you can see now. I've spread out my eye bolt just enough that it'll slide onto my pipe, but my pipe will not come out of it. So that's going to allow me to put this in to hold my grates and this to hold my pipe. So it'll be like this. Okay. It's like that. Of course, we'll go a little bit lower to put it in, but it's going to be like that. And then it can't go anywhere and it's going to hold my pipe up straight for me. So that when I'm picking it up, it's easy to carry it by those pipes. They don't bend over or move. But that's the way it's going to be. So I'm going to straighten out my other eye bolt. And the thing I'm going to do after that is... 90s off the bottom of my pipes. I bought new 90s. I was scared I couldn't get these nipples out. Might be able to, but they were cheap. A couple of dollars. And so I just bought two new 90s to go on the bottom of this pipe to go into my drum. Okay. All right, that's good on that one. Let's get the other one. All right, pipes off. Take my eye bolt off. My other eye bolt that we've enlarged some. I cannot uh, put it on here. And it'll slide on, but it won't come off. So we'll screw a 90. So screw a 90 onto here, it's going to go into our hole. Now, I've got my 90, I already put my nipple on it. It's going to take it, screw it on. So, just going to throw my pipe wrench on there. I'll use a pair of channel locks on this one. I just want to get it good and snug. And I kind of cleaned out that pipe. Uh, we just ran some water through it to blow it out. Anything, any bugs or rust or whatever, we banged on it a little bit and cleaned it out. Now, these are our little lock washers that work. We're going to put it with the teeth toward, toward me, away from the elbow. We're going to screw it all the way up on there. Take my channel locks again and just I'm going to run this nut up on there as far as it'll go. There's that one. So what we're going to do is this is going to go into the, this is going to go into the barrel. And on the inside edge, we're going to put another lock washer to hold it in place. Then we'll take a screwdriver and a hammer, put the screwdriver here and tap it down to get it tight. I'm going to try to get that on video. Not sure if I can get my arms, a wrench, a hammer, <laughs> and a camera all in there at the same time. But y'all see how it is, and then that will fit up tight against the barrel and hold it in place. So what we're going to do is slip our, we'll just slip our eye bolt on. And if you're at a big, uh, you know, like a Lowe's or a Home Depot or something like that, you can probably get these with bigger eyes that will fit. Our, just our little true value out here doesn't carry that big of a selection of eye bolts. So we're just going to put it on there. Oh, we got my washer. So. Put a washer on. 
So we're just gonna take our eye bolt, put it in a hole, slide it on, washer goes on the inside, then a nut. So let's just put this in here, run it up on there tight. And you can kind of eyeball it uh, where you want it as far as in or out. And just take my half inch box in and we're just going to tighten this nut up against the other one. Now, if you think your eye bolt's sticking in too far, take your hacksaw, cut it off a little bit, you've solved that problem. But there you go, nice and tight on there. Now we just have to put the lock washer on the inside. All right, next thing we're gonna do is, is put in our nipples. And uh, maybe you can see that in this camera here is up close, but on one side of it, we've got uh, one of the nuts and we're gonna put that in, tighten it up on this side. And on the outside, what we do is, is we simply put a, uh, had the wrong thing in my hand. Um, we take a cap and just screw a cap on. So these two that are down low are either open or closed. We don't do it any other way. They're either open or closed. You just take the cap off, wide open, put the cap on, it's closed. And we, again, change our airflow with the gate valves we put up on top. Now, we've got all that in there. I'm just gonna take my gate valves and uh, that's how we control our air. Put it up on top, screw them on. And I, and I already know what everybody's gonna be saying and I'm gonna get comments on that because my pipes are too tall. So, before, <laughs> Before you start telling me my pipes are too tall, I'll tell you, I know my pipes are too tall. But I've solved that problem. Make sure that this one's good and tight. And I just don't want them where they're over the lid area. I want them off to the side, so. There we go. That one's ready. Let's look at this. When we put the lid on, I'll show you how I solved the problem of the tall stacks. When you're building this, your intake cannot be higher than your exhaust. So if we had holes in the lid, this one would not work. It would try to suck air in the lid, push it out the, the intake, right? So we've solved that problem. What we have here is, is this has a bung hole in it. If it doesn't have a bung hole, you can drill a hole and use the same kind of clamps that you used uh, to put on the air intakes with. It's just a piece of conduit. And all I'm going to do is, is screw that in. Now, guess what? My air intakes are lower than my exhaust. Right there. So there it goes. They are lower. And the reason these are longer is this. When I built this one, I had two pieces of 36 inch pipe. That's what I used to build it. I was too cheap to go down and have them uh, <laughs> cut these off and re-thread them for me down below that. About 28, 29 inches is good height. Other ones I've built have been that way. This one was my personal one. I just built it because I didn't worry about it because I was going to put an extension on it. You can just buy a nipple. It'll screw right in the inch and a half nipple, I think. I don't think they're two inch, inch and a half nipple. Screw right in to the bung hole or if it's a two inch, whatever. I don't remember, but... I think it's an inch and a half. But anyways, that's there, that's good. It's sealed up and no problems. So what we need to do next is, is hang on our hanger to hang the lid on the side and our handle. Tell you what, you know, we spent $20 in parts in an afternoon and we have got a cooker that is fantastic. If we were to buy all this new, it'd be about $125 by the time we bought the barrel. Well, we bought the barrel, spent $20 in, uh, Probably not even that. Nuts, bolts. Well, the handle, I think the handle was nine. So another five in nuts and bolts. Uh, maybe the elbows. Yeah, maybe $20 in parts and $30 for the barrel. So 
I put $50 with stuff I already had, and now we have got a great UDS that we don't have to worry about. But this hook's gonna go on the inside, and it's gonna be right about there. And what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna bolt that on. So that way when you lift this off, you can hang it. And uh, you don't have to worry about where do I put my lid. So I, I put this hook on my other one. I like the way it works. We're gonna put it on here real quick. So we're gonna drill our first hole. Hmm? It is the UDS. Alright, put on our nut just to hold it. Okay. Now washer and our nut. Let me get a wrench and tighten these up. Now, got our hook on, so when we pull our lid off, it'll hang right there. You don't have to worry about a place to sit it. I think it's great if you put that, that hanging hook on there. So, only thing we've got left is let's put in our fire basket and uh, let y'all see how this works. All right, now you tell, different day. Um, but I talked about my fire basket, but I didn't show it to you. I told you I did not make one for it. So I just want to kind of kind of show you that. So we're gonna pull it out, get some of these things out of our way. And you see, I just got in from work. I got my white chef's jacket on. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try really hard not to get some of this black smoke on my white jacket but get these items out and we have it in here and mine is just a uh, wire basket and you can see it so I just took my uh, uh, expanded metal wrapped it up and what we did is we tack welded it right here now if you overlapped it you can put bolts in there and washers. And so put a washer on each side with some short bolts and you could bolt it all the way down and it would hold fine. You can see it's up off the bottom. And what I used there was, was I just used some bolts. And so I have four legs. Here's one here, one there. I might've did three legs, but anyways. So it has legs underneath to hold up because you have to get the airflow under it. And, uh, and of course, expanded metal on the bottom. My handle across the top is nothing but a, uh, all thread and it's uh it's got a washer on each side so we can do that but it works great it was still in good enough shape to use so i did not have to uh, make a new fire basket now we got the basket back in and and uh one thing I'm going to say is, is, is I didn't have to build that. So, you know, we spent about $50, including the drum on this rebuild. Um, if I had to do that, it would have added to the expense, but I didn't have to. So, hey, but still, you're not talking about a lot of money in that either. Um, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link in there for you for a five gallon bucket firebox. And it looks like a real neat build. I'll put a link to a, a video with that. Some of my uh, subscribers actually told me about it on live we had the other night when we talk building UDSs. Uh, it is a little bit taller, I believe, and it's gonna work more like a, a charcoal chimney because it has solid sides other than the holes in the bottom. So I think a diffuser plate would be really good to have on top of one of those. But anyways, uh, I'll put that link. So if you need to build one, you can do that. And you see how I made mine out of expanded metal. All that should be fine. I think I did it without getting any of this grease or black on my on my way, white chef's jacket. So. Let's get back to the, uh, the video now. There we go. That's done. Lids on. The other thing we have to check for is our, is our thermometer. I'm gonna check it, put it in, uh, dip it in some boiling water, the probe, see if it goes to 212. If it does, we'll know it's good and we'll drill us a hole and put it in here. If not, we'll either buy another thermometer or you can use an eye grill mini. Just put you a little small port in here, drill you a little hole where you can slide that in there to get temps. But I tell you what, folks, if you've never used a UDS, they are great. They're fun to cook on. They cook great uh, barbecue, great brisket. When my son was in college, uh, we made him one for him and his buddies out there. They love cooking on it. It's easy. Set it, forget it. And uh, it, just, it just really does work fantastic to cook. And by putting these air valves, when you get like me, you don't want to bend over all the time, uh, you can just open it up, and that'll let your heat go up. Close that air off, let it go down. And remember, we have the two lower ones down low. 
so that you can take the caps off and leave those open all the time or leave them shut all the time. But with that, you get plenty of airflow. Inch and a half, keep your pipes below your exhaust. And if you go to a lot of places, they will, they will cut these off when you, they'll make like one cut for free. Some people, you just buy two feet ones because they sell them there. But if you'll uh, have them cut them for you, they'll cut them off lower and they'll thread them also. But easy, simple, not hard. You know, it took us one afternoon and uh, a run to the, to the hardware store. And I mean, really all in all, two hours, maybe work time, maybe two hours. By the time we took everything apart and put this together, Definitely less than three, but it, it was easy. These UDSs are great cooks. This one works fantastic. And again, don't yell too loud about my high air intakes because I have an exhaust that's taller than them. But if you want to, when you put that on, if you want to keep the seal on it, just keep your, uh, keep your ring. So you can always come back in here, put it on. Pop it on here. Clamp it down. And that'll seal the lid on, especially if you're traveling somewhere and you don't want that lid to blow off. Always keep your clamp on there, but simple and easy. I'll give you some close-up pictures of some of this. We tried to do some close-ups making it, but a lot of fun. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up down there. Uh, leave a nice comment if you liked it. And if you didn't like it, well, give me a thumbs down and tell me why you didn't like it. But a good cooker. Hope y'all learned a little bit from it. Build your one. Start cooking on one because they're a lot of fun. Thanks for stopping Cookie by Texas Style Barbecue and Cuisine, and, and we're going to see you all down the road. How them boys put food away beats all I've ever seen.